Samo's natural waters are special. Something goes in there, comes out different. We often wonder why, but after generations and generations, I'm telling you, it has always been that way. Of course, things don't always turn out the way you expect. <laughs> Bo's complaining, right? Because these waters are not just special. They make everything better. As for me, this is my natural. Natural Sambo water. The taste of nature in a bottle. Ia 
mga puhay na naman ngayon na nagpulog, may may ayat pa ay tuwalan, suwa sa kuya ba sa iku, e di yung ayon. Lagos suma ni Fatia Naina, malifoma yung susunay na Fatia Kua, Reverend Dr. Latu Latay. Lagos yung malisuwi tayo 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 tayo, Esui pada ni adalah kiyoma tiwala te bama Joseph Bonifasi. Lalu kiyoma le minister soi kuma loroina. Ta kiyoma balas. Profito fanua to mama ta fito se se. Lalu kiyoma ta ta ya ta be so. Dr. King Fix. Lalu kiyoma komisi da mau runga ya Australia. Lalu kiyoma Miss Emily Lang. Lalu fiyoma na komisi na mau rungon yung sila isa mo. Lalu fiyoma na Dr. Trevor Matheson. Lalu fiyoma na suwi pa at sumusilyo sa ito ang maroroin. Sa naloa Dr. Robertson. Tato pa ang may fako o rofa at si may ngapin na sa pailangin. Polynesian Health Corridor, susunga niya Helen Matatia, malisunga niya Maria Manatin. Minveste Okilani, Professor Judith McCool, I may say Professor Sir Colin Tukutoma. I may say that the people who are living in the world are living in the world. I may say that the people who are living in the world are living in the world. I may say that the people who are living in the world are living in the world. I may say that the people who are living in the world are living in the world. I may say that the people who are living in the world are living in the world. I may say that the people who are living in the world Tak untuk ia lah, tak untuk orang yang sah, tak untuk fokus, tak untuk orang yang main mohon. Ia sehat dia mati ni malah faham walau. Faham hello ia cuan, suah faham nama lo Yesus Kristus. Fikir mana dalam hal. Atom boleh tahu ibu, ini lu sih faham mana faham mohon mohon ini yaso. Atom boleh sabu setai, mana tak tahu orang ia cuan, suah faham dalam hal ini, ini so mana faham mohon mohon. Our distinguished guests. Reverend Dr. Latu Lafai, Honorable Deputy Prime Minister, Honorable Tuwala Te Banga Josefo Bonifacio, Minister of Health, Honorable Balasi, Profito Ifanua Te Obama Tafito Selesele, Australian High Commissioner, Your Excellency Ms. Emily Lam, New Zealand High Commissioner, Your Excellency Dr. Trevor Matheson, Deputy Director General of Health, Sangaloa, Dr. Robertson. Members of our diplomatic board that I have not mentioned, heads of various government organizations and non-government organizations, businesses and partners that are gathered here today. I am very humbled and it is a great pleasure and honor to welcome you all today for the launching of the first ever Pacific Mental Health Service. Dalo Falava, warm greetings, happy new year and welcome. In time, we will get in detail of our event today. But first and foremost, we must not forget that if we choose to endeavor on a new event, on a new adventure, we have to make sure we are well equipped. We have to make sure we are prepared physically, mentally, and especially spiritually. You all look beautiful and happy today. So physically, you look okay. <laughs> but are you mentally well? Are you spiritually safe? Well, if that is still a mystery, then we must first seek His guidance of our Holy Spirit. Seek His blessings, because without God's help, we will fail. Tak, tak. Betul, mana tu cuma? 
The theme for today, according to the IBRA dictionary, is Joseph and his brothers. Joseph and his brothers. This week and next week, the International Bible Reading Association is really looking at the overall theme of healing divisions. And this week, the focus is on brothers of the Old Testament. And so yesterday on Sunday, we read about three brothers, Jacob and Esau, and how after many years of deep anger, deep resentment, they were finally able to come together and reconcile their differences. And we learn from that story that often our deepest hurts occur within the vicinity of our very own families, our Aina, often incurred by those very close to us, our own blood, bones, and flesh. But we also learn that humility, acts of kindness, and reparation is powerful. It can hold the key to disarming resentments and other barriers to reconciliation and healing within our families, within our communities. And we also learn that time and space helps us in that healing process. Today's reading about Joseph and his brothers continues to explore this theme of healing divisions by looking 
but another different set of brothers, <coughs> Joseph and his siblings. Despite the injustice, despite the violation, despite the betrayal by his brothers, Joseph was able to rise above it all. He decided that there is no room for grudge. And so he won the battle. He won the battle against bitterness. He won the battle against anger and resentment. And so we learn again from this story that healing divisions begins with acts of humility, of forgiveness, and deciding to be the better person. Today, we launch the Pacific Mental Health Survey Project. I do not confess to know a lot about mental health, but we all agree that it's a rising challenge in our communities and much work needs to be done. This project will enrich us, will enrich our understanding and make us better equipped to deal with mental health, mental illness, etc. If the Bible message of this week is to help in launching this project. And in our attempts to heal and deal with mental health, perhaps the message is, we should start by being the better person, by being the nicer brother and sister, by being more forgiving, less judging, not holding grudge, more loving, more caring, more patient, more tolerant. If we do that, we not only begin to heal ourselves and others, but also our communities.
more more ambitious via college in Porirua, New Zealand. Zuwala is an ex-serviceman of the Royal New Zealand Army, where he held the rank of captain and is currently the president of the Royal Samoa Return Servicemen Association. He is a law graduate of the Victoria University of Wellington, studied tertiary teaching at the University of Technology, and gained a master's in business administration from the Auckland Institutes of Studies and Arts Administration at the University of Auckland. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for our keynote address and official launching of our mental health service, Deputy Prime Minister, Honorable Tuwala Tevanga, Professor Introduction. I was a bit nervous after my <laughs> relaxing <laughs> exercise. Thank you, Dr. George Sri Tamba. Yeah, in my Ipatalo Fati, but your man, Oleo, and my own Bayou Fanua, your Tulango Samo, and Nita Hau, one eight mile, two punta mali, your Puno, Missy Fogi, and Tato Malo Fado, and here, Manato Fogi, Leo, and my own Muay. Yeah, <laughs> The Honorable Minister of Health, Mr. Fiona Balasi Tafito Sincerely, Associate Minister of Health, the New Zealand High Commissioner, Dr. Trevor Madison, and members of the Diplomatic Corps, heads of government ministries and corporations, development partners and sponsors, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Health systems within the Pacific region continue to face immense challenges in their capacity to provide comprehensive prevention and treatment services. Mental health services are particularly under-resourced. An early report from several Pacific Island countries indicate that more than 90% of people with diagnosed mental disorders had received no care or treatment in the previous 12 months. This is according to the World Health Organization, Western Pacific Region 2013. This, of course, is likely to be an underestimate of the actual proportion of populations living with mental health distress or disorders as to date. There has been no comprehensive multi-country survey of the burden of mental health in the region. At the 65th session of the World Health Organization Regional Committee for the Western Pacific held in Manila in October 2014, a resolution was passed endorsing both the regional strategy for mental health and the World Health Organization Mental Health Action Plan 2013 to 2020. These plans signify a commitment to improve mental health in the Pacific and contain agreed measurable indicators including a 20% increase in, serving co in service coverage for severe mental disorders, again according to WHO 2013. Like other regions, the Pacific is facing both population growth and aging, which are predicted to increase the burden of disability associated with mental health disorders and substance use disorders by 2050, according to Charleston 2015. However, the authors note that these estimates do not include data from the Oceania region. Epidemiological data on the mental health distress and disorder in the Pacific Island countries urgently require to underpin the call for greater recognition and resourcing for mental health in the region. In recent years, there has been an increasing acknowledgement of the important role that mental health plays in achieving global and national development goals, as illustrated by the inclusion of mental health in the 2030 Global Development Agenda and through the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. 
Depression is one of the leading causes of disability. Suicide is the fourth leading cause of death among 15 to 29 year olds. People with severe mental health conditions die prematurely. As much as two decades early, due to preventable physical conditions. Despite progress in some countries, people with mental health conditions often experience severe human rights violations, discrimination, and stigma. Mental health conditions can have a substantial effect on all areas of life, such as school or work performance, relationship with family, and friends and ability to participate in the community. Two of the most common mental health conditions, depression and anxiety, cost the global economy one trillion each year. Despite these figures, the global median of government health expenditure that goes to mental health is less than 2%. Many mental health conditions can be effectively treated at relatively low cost. Yet, the gap between people needing care and those with access to care remains substantial. Effective treatment coverage remains extremely low. Samoa also faces these challenges. I am informed that the mental health unit in the Ministry of Health is the smallest unit, which consists of only one psychiatrist Dr. George Tutama, 10 registered nurses, with only three with specialized training, and two social workers. The Ministry of Health data show an increasing number of patients seeking mental health services, yet mental health services continue to be under-resourced and not prioritized. The unit cannot fully respond to the demand for mental health treatment. Increased investment is required on all fronts for mental health awareness to increase understanding and reduce stigma, for efforts to increase access to quality mental health care and effective treatments, and for research to identify new treatments and improve existing treatments for all mental health disorder. In 2019, WHO launched the WHO Special Initiative for Mental Health. Universal health coverage for mental health to ensure access to quality and affordable care for mental health conditions in 12 priority countries to 100 million more people. Mental health conditions are increasing worldwide, mainly because of the demographic changes there has been a 13 rise in mental health conditions and substance use disorders in the last decade, up to 2017. Now, mental health conditions causes one in five years to live with disability. Around 20% of the world's children and adolescents have a mental health condition. With suicide, the second leading cause of death among 15 to 29 year olds. Samoa shares similar struggles with its neighboring Pacific Islands. Samoa is privileged to be included in this project, a Pacific, to conduct a Pacific mental health survey alongside its neighbors, Tonga and Tuvani. The Pacific and Samoa mental health surveys research is the first of its kind in the Pacific. It will establish for the first time baseline data for the prevalence and nature of mental health in Samoa and the Pacific. We need evidence-based data to inform our health policies, including resource allocation so that our health service can better respond to the increasing cases of mental health illness in Samoa. On behalf of the government of Samoa, I acknowledge with sincere appreciation our key funders and partners. I extend special gratitude to the New Zealand government through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade for its support and for funding this important and timely survey. I also acknowledge the ongoing work and contributions of the University of Auckland experts, academia and researchers. The government of Samoa offers its commitment 
to this project through the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Women, Community and Social Development, who are working closely with our partners on developing and implementing this survey and research. The government wishes the whole team who are working on rolling out and completing this initiative success and offers its full support and blessings. I therefore officially launch the Pacific Samoan <coughs> Mental Health Survey and wish you all the best with the tasks ahead. So it's still a way of here. Thank you very much, uh, Honourable Deputy Prime Minister, for that keynote address, and thank you for officially launching our Pacific Mental Health Service. Now that that official uh, mental health survey has been launched, I think we should start by doing a small research and survey ourselves. So I want you to turn to the person next to you and say, are you okay? <laughs> It's good. it's good to see some people laughing. You know, laughter is the best medicine, but they say if you're laughing for no reason, you probably need some medicine. <laughs> now, our second survey. Look to the other side. It is known that about one in four people suffer from mental disorders. So if you look to one side and you count one, two, three, if they all seem okay, then it must be you. <laughs> Let's move on with our program now, shall we? Okay, so next in our program. Okay. Is our guest speaker. Next in our program is our guest speaker, the New Zealand High Commission. Again. Our next speaker does not need much introduction. You've seen him, you've seen His Excellency, do a lot of community work. He was also part of our uh, measles outbreak team, in which uh, the New Zealand uh, High Commissioner helped to coordinate, and especially the BACMED team that came over. The High Commissioner Matheson is a career diplomat who joined the New Zealand Diplomatic Service in 86. Dr. Matheson is currently New Zealand's High Commissioner to the Independent State of Samoa, and concurrently New Zealand Consul General to American Samoa having taken up his position in March 2019. Prior to Samoa, he was New Zealand's ambassador to the Republic of Indonesia. Dr. Matheson was formerly ambassador to Italy and concurrently permanent representative to the United Nations and other international agencies around the world. Like I mentioned before, the New Zealand High Commission was a very crucial part of our measles outbreak team that came to Samoa, coordinated one of the biggest volunteer work, not only in the Pacific, but in the whole world. And this includes our partners, mainly from New Zealand and also Australia. Please put your hands together for His Excellency, Dr. Trevor Madison. Tihei Maori ora, ena mana, ena rea, raranga tira ma, tēnā koto, tēnā koto. Greetings, one and all. Now, soon, soon, uh, Reverend Dr. Latu Lata, thank you for your kind words this morning. May I just add a, a special prayer for all those people who have been suffering in Auckland from the floods and the uh, state of emergency, and all of those other individuals uh, affected by their travel plans including, I understand, a number of people who, from the University of Auckland, from other agencies who would have flown here for this event, um, but had been able to, to arrive in time. And that, of course, includes Sir Colin Tukuye uh, Tonga, um, the project uh, principal investigator. To Love Atheonga Tuala, the acting prime minister, for his excellent address was previously uh, Lao Apionga Balasi, the Minister of Health. Uh, Lao Apionga Bangalore, Dr. Robert Thompson, the acting 
SDG of Health, Talaapayona, uh, Dr. Mena Motusanga, the CEO of the Ministry of Women, Community and Social Development. To the members of the diplomatic corps, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It's a real delight for me and a great honor to speak at this official launch of the Pacific Mental Health Survey Project. Made possible through the collaborative efforts of the Samoa Ministries of Health, of Women, Community and Social Development, and in partnership with the University of Auckland. Firstly, I would like to acknowledge the resilience and strength of the Samoa Ministry of Health to all their first responders and respective partners within the health sector in navigating the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic to date. The past three years, following on from a measles epidemic, have been a challenging period for Samoa. Therefore, I congratulate you all for your resilience and resolve and achieving yet another milestone today with the launch of the Pacific Mental Health Surveys Project. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade of Aotearoa New Zealand is delighted to have provided half a million New Zealand dollars to fund this important research, being delivered through the expert Pacific Mental Health Team at the University of Auckland and coordinated by the National Institute for Health Innovation. This work falls under the umbrella of the Polynesian Health Corridors Program, which is funded by New Zealand Impact and managed by the New Zealand Ministry of Health. And I'm not certain that they are here or made it today. Um, we hope that there will be representatives from the ministry here today or later this week as part of the program. The Polynesian Health Corridors Program is working to strengthen health system linkages between Aotearoa New Zealand and Polynesia to build and enhance health system capacity and capability as well as achieve better health outcomes. Mental health is an emerging priority for this program. As mentioned earlier by the Acting Prime Minister, we do have alarming statistics in a report by the World Health Organization indicating that more than 90% of people in the Pacific region with diagnosed mental disorders had not received any care or treatment in the previous 12 months. This Pacific Mental Health Survey project aims to overcome that, to comprehensively assess mental health needs, not only here in Samoa, but as well in Tuvalu and Tonga. Understanding the prevalence of mental health disorders and the use of mental health services is the first step to understanding how best to tackle this difficult issue. The survey provides a chance to review existing policies and identify workforce capacity needs and supports country-led sustainable responses to mental health issues, growing local capacity in the process. This survey will also be an invaluable resource to inform policy and to help appropriately tailor health care services to ensure countries like Samoa have the information needed to best address mental health needs. By building a better knowledge base, Pacific people can advocate for better mental health services. As we have heard, this is the very first comprehensive national study of mental health in Samoa and will form the foundation for Samoa's National Bank Mental Health Service Planning. It is also an important step in sparking Talanoa around mental health issues. The study could not have been timely with the impact of the COVID pandemic <coughs> and climate crisis exacerbating mental health issues among our Pacific communities. As I started, while not all participants are able to be here today, I would like, however, to acknowledge a few key individuals who are leading and delivering on this important work, including from the University of Auckland, Sir Colin Tupia Tonga, the co-lead and principal investigator of the project, 
Associate Professor Judith McCool, the co-lead for the project, our colleagues from the New Zealand Ministry of Health, as well as our key partners in Samoa, including CEO Dr. George Tuetama. Uh, other individuals involved as well, Mulia Nantele, Dr. Potai Roberts Ayati, the National Coordinator, and Dr. Rohani, not to mention many others um, in this important work that needs to go forward. I also acknowledge our key partners and counterparts in government at the Samoa Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Women, Community and Social Development. Thank you all for your ongoing collaboration and partnership ensuring this important work comes to fruition and is delivered. We are privileged, we are honoured to support this valuable work and it's wonderful to see it finally come to fruition. We wish our implementing partners well and pray that this assistance will contribute to further advancing research, evidence-based research and data quality to address mental health issues and help improve the mental health care in Samoa and the region. Norera Namihi Nunui Bafetai Lava. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for those kind words. Um, we do hope to continue our work together and we're always looking forward to uh, more work together, especially in the area of mental health. Next in our program, um, as you all know that um, our New Zealand delegates and especially our uh, New Zealand Ministry of Foreign Affairs could not make it due to the uh, delays in the Auckland flights. So uh, in the next in our program, we have acknowledgements of funders and partners. So I'll just uh, quickly read out uh, the small list that they sent to me this morning. Our acknowledgements is National Institute of Health and Innovations, NIHI. The Pacific Mental Health Surveys Project is funded by the Polynesian Health Corridors Program, established by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and T Trade in conjunction with the Ministry of Health. The NIHI is provided providing project management and data management support. Principal investigator, Sir Colin Tukutoma, myself, Dr. Judith McCool, Dr. Rowani Nashu, and our project manager, Dr. Nale Taufa, and our coordinator, um, Dr. Potoi. Maria Manita and Heli Matatia, our funders for the Polynesian Health Corridors, Polynesian Health Corridors Program, which sits within the Pacific Health Agency, Manatu Haurua, in the Ministry of Health New Zealand. The program is funded by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade with the National Institute for Health and Innovation, providing support for project management and data management. We also like to acknowledge the participation of Auckland University and not forgetting our local partners, the Ministry of Health, Samoa, Ministry of Women, Community and Social Development, of Samoa, Samoa Statistics Bureau, New Zealand High Commissioner to Samoa, Coastal Trust, National University of Samoa. During the research, we'll be seeking more support from local businesses and partners as we start our rollout both in Polo and Savannah. If they so wish, please contact myself or one of our teams. We do not have a limit on how much you would like to donate or offer. We take checks, credit card, or even cash. <laughs> or even just a handshake and a fist bump water. It is Your prayers and support is most important and would be greatly appreciated. We also know that we invite a lot of the media to be here today. And we also pray that the media and your articles and your settings can a little bit more therapeutic and healing rather than causing panic and heaven. From a mental health perspective, it'll be nice to read something in the newspaper, it'll be nice to hear something in the radio, or see it on the TV, and it actually makes you relax. More healing, like the fact that I said today, more therapeutic. Now it's too alone. But next in our program is our delegate from New Zealand. Dr. Ryan Nashu is a director for the newly established University of Auckland Centre of Pacific and Global Health. 
She has a PhD in health sciences which specializes in Pacific health and Pacific development research and evaluation. She is also part of our research committee and co investigator for the Pacific Mental Health Service. Today, due to the absence of our New Zealand delegates, the MPAD New Zealand and our New Zealand partner, Sir Colin Tupitoma, Dr. Rowani is now uh, the head of our New Zealand delegate to Samoa for the launching of this project. Please put your hands together for Dr. Rowani Nashi. Just a slight change in our program. I think at this moment we will close our formalities officially. And then after we close our formalities officially, we would like to take some photos of just um, with our guests and especially with all our partners, if that's okay. And then after our photos, then you can have your chance, uh, with, especially with the media, to ask any questions or any queries or any other explanation that you would like from this project. And at the same time as well, our refreshments is served in the back. So uh, in saying that, uh, but I want to my father, and I'm just going to talk to you. 
Thank you again, Reverend, for officially closing our formalities for today. Yeah, I said that so much, but tell you what I'm going to do. Hip, hip. Hip, hip. Can I kindly ask of your Tabita, Fado, Wala, and Mormori, my final school, and Mandi, Tato Paham, and Salvation Army, and the Pepper Tato team by the Mental Health. We would like you just to take a photo shoot, especially for our media. And then after that, we can enjoy our lunch, which is served in the back. My final love. Taya oi ona tsa Elisa tupe mo maliu fa ipoi ponga a onga le fa nau ta avali po o se fa le fo Is chu o walo na kamba wa bili ma gei le wa bawa ko pe ko pe bawa le ka pongia ko pe ro pe bawa ngai a few my nei lo le federal pacific finance no so so mana onga ta tupe papi oi le 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 a sa ka ko le fa nga luenga federal pacific finance serving sa most financial needs Align to Recruitment, we're based in New Zealand and we're 100% owned and operated by a Samoan family. We're here to recruit people, give the opportunity to people for full-time work in New Zealand as a skilled worker, um, so trades, carpenter, mechanic, or anyone who's successful with the quota to be able to come over to New Zealand.
Eh, kalai lor me afai se. Lewa madi umat koi inga bolai lor kofi amau se kufi. Sema, awak ke poli? Cao wan file on show. Asyik yo kaya wan ba iPhone file file show long. Sema saya yo long nak kira file ngan benga. Mar fam masyau kama lah file on show. Ah, ke poli? Se kumai ngan kumai. San, oh mai. Olah esok kala. Olah sah file on show ko inga ke risau. Ngaku yo mang media koi teripa. Ebi lisa ya file on show ko inga. Se yo la kaya usui ol ofisa ma abel pepa madi. Olau in siwa e au wala ise te unga tupe mole luma na e manuia. E mole pui pui nga tau tupe olau soifua e tua i aile whanau e tina pul te mao le ainga. Mai ma whai o na tounu no atu mo so se ma whua anga i te whina ngalo i aile. A le mwhai loa sa kwa kwe o kwa whaa makana. Tina, o ke polo le mwhai mwhai le loa mwhai se wala. E le si loa la se o kama so. Samoa Life, le in siwa mo tangata nuu o Samoa.